Okay, we're here at the International Builder Show doing another mic'd up trade show. Um, I'm with Masano, we manufacture our radiant ceiling panels and hydronic controls. But we attended IBS alongside Yaga and WBI. Yaga manufactures hydronic fan coils, WBI manufactures radiant floor panels, and all these systems can be managed with Masonic controls. So we came here together, it's been a great show so far. This is the last day, so hopefully we can get some good reactions. How you doing, sir? Ooh, good. Good, good. You work with hydronics at all? This is hot or cold water to heat or cool. We've got a radiant oh, ceiling. Too, yeah, nice yeah. So, you know, in the past, the radiant floors were all high mass systems like pouring concrete slabs. So we moved that technology to the ceiling to achieve a low thermal mass. Oh, it's in the ceiling. Yeah, so check it out. This is how it's typically installed. You'll have more panels, you'll have more ceiling coverage. You go for about 70% to meet cooling loads, but heating loads are met at about 40%. Um, but yeah, just install 24 inches on center. You just break off this EPS edge and staple or screw up the panels. Yeah, of course. Can you just cover that with drywall? Yeah, 5 8 drywall is what we recommend, but we've had people do wood coverings, some cement coverings. Um, you just want to make sure that there's no gap. You're making a radiant surface with your ceiling. Yeah. And so in heating, yes, radiating thermal energy, people are always concerned, like, doesn't heat rise? And it's no, hot air is what rises. So thermal energy, just like the sun, can still be radiated downward. Let's talk about fire ratings. Do you guys ever have any issues with any, any of the... No, typically not. And then... Um, is it like a low voltage system in there? This is all hydronic. Okay. So it's all hot or cold water running oh, through these panels, so not electric. And we're trying to achieve efficiency with that. It's a lot easier to generate hot or cold water than it is to just heat up an electric floor element. Quick cool design. Yeah. That's, that should have been a long time coming. I was in yeah. like 12 years. So yeah. I so checking that out. Like, Europe's already accepted it quite a bit. And so we are actually an Italian company. We have a factory in Italy. And so we adapted it to the U.S. market. But yeah, in Europe, it's already a big thing. Radiant heating and cooling. Oh, yeah. yeah, big time. Yeah. I think that was... Like, as soon as it came out, uh, and I've seen multiple iterations of it, I love it, and I've just never been able to use it. Oh, awesome. Um, anything new with it, or is it pretty much just... I don't know what the last version you saw, but, we, you know, it used to come with a drywall pre-attached. We found drywallers yeah. didn't want to hang plumbing, plumbers didn't want to hang drywall, and it was kind of expensive to ship them from Italy, and so we went with the new NK model, so it's, it does not have that drywall pre-attached. We changed the piping because we found that... Um, like when you use like PEX piping, like thin PEX piping, it had some expansion and contraction noise. And you know, our clients want silent and invisible comfort, so that was a no-go. So this is now PERT piping, which is similar, um, but there's like an interior oxygen barrier that helps out too. So it um, doesn't expand and contract Yeah, well. it expands and contracts, but the noise isn't there. Yeah, so we found like, and it was like rubbing against the, the EPS foam, and that was kind of creating an annoying noise. Yeah, you definitely have uh, it must have been like maybe two years since I saw it last because the last version had drywall uh -huh. and had PEX in it. Exactly, exactly. And so there's still the PEX piping backbone, but it was these parts that were expanding and contracting. And this is our patented fitting that does allow yeah, for the expansion and contraction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we also increased the radiant surface area by a little bit. And still 2x4 panels? 2x8. Uh, so we have the 2x8 option. This is, this is the 2x4. This is actually like the new one. Can you still field cut them? Yes, or is yes. That no you should, you can, but you'd pressure test then. Uh, we now offer the 2x4 just because they're pre pressure tested from the factory. So you offer the 2x4, 2x8, and 4x8? We do not do the 4x8 anymore. Yeah. We, in, in Italy, we do. Like they, they still make them in the factory, but for the US market, we've just gone to the 2x8. Um, yeah. Is that all in Bluefield? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it's 24 inches on center. Ideally, ceiling joists were 24 inches on center, but they're not, so that's why we go with metal or wood. Yes, and so you'll be going into that. And this is what it, I'm sure you've seen already the installs, like... Well, yeah, but now that it doesn't have drywall on it, it's different. Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, so really you want to... Yeah, so you have to create a, a, drop, mm -hmm. a drop ceiling. Yeah, slightly. And so it's typically a two-by-two. Two. Um, and then what does the, the humidity sensor look like It's now? this guy. So I can show you what it looks like installed. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot better. Yeah. So M sense, right? And so the only part that's sticking out is this with the vents, How of course. Often do you have to have this? So these are all hardwired. So are you talking about in terms of battery life and stuff like that? Yeah, in terms of like if you had a 3,000 oh, foot floor plate. every zone. Every zone. Every zone. Because um, we're every monitoring zone. the dew point in every zone. You don't, you don't want to have one zone not being managed because then, right. yeah, just humidity issues too. But this is what it looks like. One per zone, but what, in an extreme example, which I know you probably wouldn't do this, but let's say you had a 3,000 foot floor plate and you zoned it all the same, you only have one of these? It's just like having different humidity levels in different areas yeah. would be kind of sketchy. If yeah, we want to monitor, exactly. yeah. So that kind of kind of push you to zone it out. To break it down a bit, yeah. Um, um, and I gotta get on a phone call right now. No problem. Gonna, I'll continue to cool. talk yeah. to you, but yeah. yeah, this is cool. It looks yeah. like it's come a long way, so. yeah. and this is a little And that's what you're going into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. 
that's the rough, you have like a rough in box. Yeah. So to do cooling, you need to be able to make a really responsive panel to avoid the dew point and avoid condensation. So when you do cooling, you need a good sensor and control platform to adjust the supply water temperature. Um, and so that's why we went to the ceiling. That's how it's typically installed. You'll go for about 70% ceiling coverage. This is a little less. And then you just sheet wrap right over there. Yeah, 5 8 drywall is what we recommend, but we've had people do wood or cement. Yeah, yeah. Ah, and then there's a the thermal. This is more what you'd see for ceiling coverage. Yeah. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? You guys have a radiant ceiling? A radiant ceiling? Yeah, we, we moved it to the ceiling because our goal was to provide radiant cooling and needed a really fast responding low mass system. And that does cooling too? Yeah, exactly. So you can see some thermal images right here of it in cooling and in heating. Um, and then that's great because you're combining your energy source. So now you just use an air to water Are heat you pump. The panels like this, obviously. Typically two by eight. Yeah. Okay. And then you break off this EPS edge, staple or screw up this wing right here. Or nail. Break off whatever. This right here. This will snap off. And then this is what's going to be attached to your furring channels or ceiling joists. Oh, because that's going over. Yeah. You screw that in. Exactly. And that supports everything. Yeah. Um, and then so it's about eight pounds dry and then 10 pounds wet for the two by eight. So it's about two pounds of water. People have been asking about weight. So how do you cool it? Do you go for a chiller? Air to water, you can do a chiller. Uh, typically air to water heat pump is what we use because it generates hot and cold water. So... Or geothermal. Either way. Yeah, whatever, and our controls can talk to it all. So we'll talk to your heat pump, we'll talk to your circulator pump, and then we can talk to your domestic hot water too. Very comprehensive control platform that we had to develop for radiant what kind cooling. Of is this? Is that it is a pert. We had to change to pert because we had some expansion and contraction noise in our testing. Okay. Uh, basically, there would be some like crackle as it expands and contracts. So we went with pert. Pert, P E R T. And it doesn't break down? Similar. No, for yeah. Oxygen? Yeah, and has an oxygen barrier. Okay. Yeah, and then this is our sensor. The big fear with cooling, right, is condensation. So we monitor the dew point when condensation would form, and our controls keep the radiant surface just above that point. No. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then, yeah, this is your fan coil, so an air unit that'll use the same supply and return hot or cold water. Just going okay, direct. Wait, wait. So that. It doesn't have to be hydrotechnic to air. Yes, like and so, exactly. So you'll just heat or cool this coil, blow air through it to heat or cool that air. And you can put that and hang out right on the floor. So this is a floor unit. You can see right here on this image, it's along the windows oh, to get rid of some of that solar gain. Awesome. Yeah, they're manufactured in Belgium. It's a company called Yaga. Uh, they so, also have ceiling too, and in-wall. Um, where's the floor? Huh, mechanical room. For, so you're generating the heat, hot or cold water with the boiler in the mechanical room. So uh, that's a separate, a separate device. You, you don't even sell it. No, we're the delivery. <laughs> okay, give me a... Um, yeah, you have a badge I could scan or anything? Yeah, yeah. I could send you all the information. Okay, scan my badge. There you go, let's see if your email's on there. There you go. Okay, Frank, uh, yeah, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Good, take care, enjoy the show.